It's no revelation, but North America and the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG tend to get the short end of the stick when it comes to exclusive promotional cards in comparison to Japan's OCG. We often miss out on cards, whether those be standard premiere or special tie-ins to other products for no apparent reason. While I can understand that we don't have the specific products from Japan that some of these cards are tied to, I can find no excuse as to why we in the TCG aren't able to tie those cards to an equivalent available to consumers outside of the land of the rising sun. But what if I told you that us poor souls in the TCG have been missing out on cards since the very beginning? Well, that's exactly what we'll be exploring today. These are the lost cards of the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG. Yu-Gi-Oh!'s official card game debuted in Japan with a Volume 1 set on February 4th, 1999, about three years prior to the debut of Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon in North America. Through the following year, Japan received seven sets, dubbed the Volume Series, as they were simply named Volumes 1 through 7. And found in these seven sets are a portion of 151 cards that to this day are still exclusive to the OCG. Considering that they are all monsters, in loose terms, I guess that these are Yu-Gi-Oh's equivalent to the original 151 Pokemon. I thought that was interesting. Starting in Volume 1, we have seven exclusive cards. Archfiend Mirror, Candle of Fate, Eye Armor, Fiend's Hand, Hito Denchak, whose artwork is a palette swap of Armored Starfish, Lala Leon, and Rob Deerdeck, better known as the Deerdeck. Some of you might recognize these monsters from the early Yu-Gi-Oh! video games, as that was the only means in which the US had access to play these specific cards. And at face value, these all sound awful, pitiful low-level normal monsters with barely respectable stats. But keep in mind that 1200 attack points was the high end of non-tribute normal monsters in this very first set of the OCG. With Silver Fang, Hitatsumi Giant, and Mammoth Graveyard being actual powerhouse beat sticks, so these monsters are comparable to what would be the 1400 to 1600 attack level 4 monsters of the TCG's first set. Moving into Volume 2, we find six exclusive cards. Dorover, Holograw, Solitude, Supporter in the Shadows, The Bewitching Phantom Thief, whose artwork suggests that it's actually an early counterpart to Great Phantom Thief and the White Magical Hat, and lastly, Wood Remains. In Volume 2, monsters like these started to become less and less appealing. Not only did the OCG receive better statted monsters, exceeding the original 1200 attack point cap, but this set also introduced Mystical Elf and Spirit of the Harp. Wall monsters with 2,000 defense points that you absolutely did not want to attack into with these small bodies. Volume 3, which contains another 7 exclusive cards, continued this trend, introducing even more beat sticks and wall monsters, quickly making the cards we'll be talking about irrelevant. Aki Huron, Binding Chain, keep the artwork of this one in your back pocket because it will come up later, Eldeen, Gany Gumo, Kamakiri Man, and Wandering Doomed, the Skull Servant Impersonator. And last is not your barrel, it is in fact my barrel. That was terrible, please don't unsubscribe. Fun fact, starting with Volume 3, sets would each debut one piece of Exodia. This set contained left leg of the Forbidden One. Honestly, that is such a cool way to maintain the extremely rare nature of the cards that were boasted in the anime. Japan really did do it better. Getting into Volume 4, this set debuted Right Leg of the Forbidden One as well as Summon Skull, which would go on to be the strongest one tribute monster for the time being. We also have six additional cards that are exclusive to the OCG. Tao the Chanter, Water Girl, Doku Roizo the Grim Reaper, Fiend Reflection Number 1, Barrel Lily, and Caterpillar. Get that thing away from me. Tao the Chanter was revisited recently in the TCG with a new Illusion monster type. Really cool to see the old cards get some love, but we still need the original. Fiend Reflection number 1 was also revisited recently in the TCG as a retrain for the new Millennium Archetype, and it's actually pretty decent. Volume 4 seems like it got the most attention for the TCG. Let's see if that trend continues in the last three sets of the Volume series. Spoiler, it does not. Volume 5 contains 8 exclusive cards, and you're probably thinking that this set introduced one of the arms of Exodia. Well, you'd be wrong, because they just stopped introducing Exodia pieces in these sets. What the hell am I supposed to do with just two legs? Anyways, we have Acid Crawler, Armored Rat, Bioplant, Dark Shade, <laughs> The Thing That Hides in the Mud, Wing Egg Elf, and Toad Master. To this day, I still want this Toad Master to be retrained in the TCG and have some kind of interaction with the now Witness Protected Slime Toad, but we'll never see that, surely. 
Yeah, Volume 5 is a bit underwhelming. Even looking at the cards that we would receive in the TCG, really the only noteworthy cards of the set were Uguchi. Volume 6 is actually quite interesting, but not for the reason you might think. Up to this point, Volumes 1 through 5 introduced several fusion monsters, and these early fusion monsters suffered the same fate as their TCG counterparts, and that they were not the best options in terms of resource management. They just took too much for very little of a payoff, but unlike the TCG variants, these fusion monsters were completely unplayable because polymerization debuted in Volume 6. Well, mostly unplayable. If you were lucky enough to get your hands on a certain specialty box, which we'll cover later in the video, you could obtain polymerization prior to Volume 6. Disregarding the confusion I imagine every Japanese player had at the sight of purple monsters, Volume 6 holds 13 exclusive cards. Air Eater, Bolt Escargo, Cyber Commander, Dice Armadillo, Giant Scorpion of the Tundra, Horn Imp, which I'm baffled that it's still an OCG exclusive, being such a recognizable monster of Yugi, Ice Water, Kenny Kabuto, Laughing Flower, Lord of Zemia, Sea King Dragon, Tenderness, and Torike. Volume 7 isn't as interesting, containing another 13 lost cards, but one of them is very special to me. Akakisu, Arlone, Armanite, Black Dragon Jungle King, Cyber Soldier, Fiend Sword, Ghoul with an Appetite, Monstrous Bird, Royal Guard, Togex, Water Dragon Fairy, Zanki, and lastly, if I could pick one card out of every OCG exclusive to be imported to the TCG today, it would be the monster Dark Chimera. Easily, one of my favorite classic monsters from the early anime and the early video games. I don't care how annoying dealing with those stats are. This is one of the coolest monster artworks ever. So, that covers all of the volume series booster sets, but some of the little smarties in the audience probably noticed that we've only covered 60 cards up to this point. That's not even half of the 151 we've set out to cover in this video. Where do the rest of them come from? Allow me to introduce you to the Card Das series of booster sets. During the same time that the volume series were released in Japan, Konami also released exclusive sets, dubbed the booster sets, and these exclusive sets could only be obtained in Card Das vending machines, which are similar to the sticker vending machines that we have here in the States, where you can sometimes obtain single trading cards from various games for a couple quarters. Once again, Japan doing it bigger and better with distributing an entire booster pack. And these seven exclusive card DOS sets contain cards from the regular volume series as well as exclusive cards that can only be found in the vending machines. This makes them even harder to come by nowadays. Starting with Booster 1, we have 26 cards that were never seen outside of Japan. Ancient Jar, Dark Plant, Dijin the Watcher of the Wind, Doron, Embryonic Beast, Fire Eye, which is actually the only lost fire monster in the entire TCG, Gate Dij, Graveyard in the Hand of Invitation, Hurricane, Lucky Trinket, Man-Eating Plant, Mech Mole Zombie, Midnight Fiend, Mystical Capture Chain, go ahead and take Binding Chain out of your pocket, Corporate needs you to find the difference between this monster and this monster. They're the same monster. Moving on, Nightmare Scorpion, Phantom Duan, Phantom Ghost, Sinchar, The Melting Red Shadow, or as it's more widely known, Sleep Paralysis Demon, Twin Long Rods Number 1, Vishwar, Ready? Water Element, Weather Control, Wicked Dragon with the Ursat's Head, and Yamatano Dragon Scroll. Booster 1 covered quite a substantial amount of the cards we missed out on in the early TCG. Considering that we have what is an exact equivalent here in North America, it would have been nice to see these cards put on their own exclusive set like Japan. Because I fondly remember begging my mother for quarters whenever I came across the single card vending machines. Booster 2 covers a little less than half as many cards as Booster 1 with 11 new exclusive cards. Abyss Flower, Bone Mouse, Buku, which is my second overall favorite OCG exclusive card, and just behind Dark Chimera for cards I picked to be imported to the TCG. We also have Fairy Witch, Majorous Light, One Who Hunts Souls, Stone Ghost, White Dolphin, Wood Clown, and Zeri Gun. Booster 2 also included Aki Huron and Ma Barrel, but we've already covered those. So let's move on to Booster 3, which contains 12 exclusive cards. Starting with Dryad, who is featured on the ritual spell Doriato's Blessing, and would then become the ritual monster elemental mistress Doriato. Kappa Avenger, La Moon, Leo Wizard, Losark, Living Voss, Minomushi Warrior, Mon Larvis, Muse A, Tasunuto Shigo, Yashinoki, and Yormengarde. Booster 4 gives us 8 more exclusive OCG cards, those being Barrel Rock, Emperor of the Land and Sea, Fairy of the Fountain, Gorgon Egg, 
Mech Base, Orion the Battle King, Spirit of the Mountain, and Winged Egg of New Life. Not much to stay on the Booster 4 exclusives other than Orion the Battle King looks like a rejected Muppet design, so I'm glad Konami picked it up. In Booster 5, we have 13 OCG exclusive cards, 30,000 Year White Turtle, Aqua Stink, Beak Snake, Crow Goblin, Fungi of the Mask, Korogashi, Crocodilus, Machine Attacker, Pot of Trick, Rainbow Marine Mermaid, Tentacle Plant, Turtle Raccoon, and Wing Eagle. We've only got a couple more sets to cover before we're done here today, moving into Booster 6, having 7 exclusives. Boulder Tortoise, Dragon Statue, Garvis, Ill Witch, Mikaelian, Rock Spirit, and Spirit of the Winds. Quite a few tribute monsters in this one, not that they're good or anything, even for their time, but still interesting to note. And the final set of the Cardos Vending Machine exclusive sets is Booster 7, containing only 4 cards that we've never received in the TCG. Ancient Sorcerer, Beautiful Beast Tamer, Big Mommy Vibes, and I'm here for it, Job Change Mirror, and Night Lizard. Something that I haven't pointed out yet for all of these cards, but I feel deserves a mention, is how phenomenal the artwork is for these old Yu-Gi-Oh! OCG cards. It's so distinguished over the modern overfill of waifu aesthetic that we get nowadays. You certainly aren't going to find artwork like this in the new Whatever of the Duelist core set. But, that does it for Volume 7. If you've been keeping track of the numbers, you're probably saying that there are still 12 missing cards of that original 151. And you're 100% correct. Will this video ever end? Ignoring the counter that confirms that it will, in fact, end, who's to say? On March 6th of 1999, Konami of Japan would release the very first starter deck for the official card game, which fell in line with the premiere of the Yu-Gi-Oh! movie in Japan. This starter deck is where players could obtain the very first print of Polymerization, what is known as the Starter Box Theatrical Release. This box set contained a fully constructed starter deck, a deck box with belt clip, life point calculator, six star chips, and a playmat. Bruh, we literally get nothing in the TCG. A six-year-old me is salivating over the thought of this product. Nonetheless, that pre-constructed deck included eight still OCG exclusive cards. Those being Ancient Tree of Enlightenment, Lunar Queen Elzame, Mad Jin Gun, easily in the top three for my favorite artworks of the early OCG cards. This and Sangenjin are the first cards that come to mind when I think about that old school art style of the Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Mask Clown, Monst Turtle, Mystery Hand, and Serpent Marauder. A later release of the starter box, and by later I mean a new version was released not even two weeks later, replaced good cards in the deck with bad ones. And this is where our final lost cards of the Yu-Gi-Oh TCG are found. Genin, Rock Ogre Grotto Number 2, and Spiked Snail. We made it, boys. That is the entirety of the original 151, or the lost cards of the Yu-Gi-Oh trading card game. And would it surprise you that it still doesn't cover every card that we are currently missing from the TCG? It goes far beyond just the physical card game, extending into the video games and even spin-off games of the franchise, but we'll save that for another time. Because that's going to wrap up today's discussion, let me know your thoughts. How would you want to see these old OCG exclusive cards imported to the TCG? Drop a comment down below. If you liked the video, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated, as always guys. And until next time, this has been Purple Pineapple TV, signing off.